What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy, AJ Red. I'm back again with another episode of the AJ Red Show covering Married to Medicine, Season 9, Episode 11. Y'all want to discuss it? Pick up where they left off at the Christmas party, the holla sleigh. Y'all want to discuss it? Fuck it, y'all. No one discuss it anyway. Y'all ready? It's the AJ Red Show. Starring me, AJ Red. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, AJ Red. Like I said, I'm back again with another episode of the AJ Red Show, covering Marriage and Medicine Season 9, Episode 11. But first, before I get into any of that shit, the episode. Look, let me stop and pause for the calls. If this is your first video, go ahead and now hit that notification bell. That bell basically says that when you click that song, bitch, it's going to send you a notification so that when I upload these videos and so many more yet to come, you'll get a notification so you can be one of the first ones to watch it and comment and like, as I don't want you to forget to do now. Like this video. Hit that thumbs up. Old subscribers, thank you again. Welcome back. I love you so much for holding it down for me. I appreciate it like I tell you all before. Um, and as usual, I ask so much of you and you all deliver so much more abundantly than I can even ask. And for that, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you and I love you from the bottom of my, of my old heart. Um, so with that, let's jump into the episode of Marriage to Medicine, season nine, episode 11. So as we all know, episode 10, they left off at the Hollisley, which was at Quad's house after she was ruling queen of her own palace, honey. She let everybody know that she was a black woman doing it for herself, hallelujah. And that she got everything on her own with no man being divorced and, you know, all this other extra stuff. The speech goes on for hours. But anyway, they pick up back at the Hollisley party at Quad's house. And all they have the camera focused on is heavenly messy ass sitting over there whispering, whispering sweet nothings up in uh, <clears throat> Toya's ear. Basically telling her that Zane and Anila, guests of uh, Quad's over to the Hollisley party, are responsible for spreading a rumor about her in the neighborhood saying that she was down there fucking somebody or humping on somebody or doing the old yum yum bouncy bouncy the bedroom bed boogie basically Talia went off and got mad and was like look which one of them did you say it you bitches y'all said that shit because if you did I'm about ready to put my motherfucking heel in your face right about now so heavily got all this shit started then she turned around and said what's going on I don't understand what happened you know, why did they get kicked out? What is the whole ordeal about? But heavenly bitch, she was the only one they said, as they say, showing up to work, bitch. You was getting the chaos started. She was getting the rumor spread and the bullshit led. She was already in that line marching by herself. Even if even if she said she had to do it by herself, she said she'll go. She said, Lord, send me. If I got to carry this whole cast by myself, hallelujah, send me. I do it. And I want that percentage of that check to come my way. For let me be the bitch to take the brunt of all this bullshit that's coming my way from all these followers, lookers, and watchers, and, uh, you know, viewers of the show. Um, after all the allegations, real quick, well, I ain't gonna say all the allegations, because the shit wasn't even far by over, because I gotta get to that point. I couldn't wait to get to this video, y'all. But anyway, after Talia uh, confronted the ladies, Zane and Anila, and they, they denied all allegations, you know, directed at them. She got up, went in the kitchen, and immediately told um, Eugene about it. Now, Eugene, I thought Eugene probably would go on because y'all know he's been a little sensitive. His period been off and on, you know, throughout the seasons. And he's been dealing with some shit. But um, Talia also ran to Anita's mom telling her what the fuck was going on. And y'all know Anita mama had the time. I think she'd be drinking a few cocktails before she get down to the party. And probably when she get there and she'd be acting all shocked and shit. Oh no, not the Anita. I don't think so. What, the, oh my God, all this old extra shit here. The bottom line is I'm pretty sure she done seen them episodes and I'm pretty sure she has heard Anita say some pretty uncomfortable shit about these other ladies, you know, over there to the house and she been living in the last four weeks or so. Although this shit is already pre-recorded. But I'm pretty sure she heard a couple of negative comments about some of the other ladies in the group and heard some shit probably overhearing her tell Kieran was going on or probably being on FaceTime because, you know, they love being on FaceTime and shit. And I think she overheard some shit that was going on. And I think she probably acting all surprised and shit because she put on a fake little front. Like, she knew and like, oh, my God, I heard the same thing, but I'm not going to admit it. Oh, my God. 
Mananila. Okay, whatever. Y'all drop down in the comments and <laughs> let me know what y'all think about that little situation right there. I personally, that's my motherfucking fact about it. That's why I created this platform because I can tell you what I think and invite your motherfucking opinion. Hallelujah. Come down and drop in the comments and tell me how you feel if you feel differently about it. Um, Toya and Audra coming to blows. I'm, I'm going to say coming to blows because I thought that, I, I'm not going to lie, I thought Audra was going to be being you know, fucked around and slay Toya or some shit like that and be the took care of the old lady, you know, whatever. <laughs> I see, like, Simone, the old girl handled herself pretty well. Audrey, you did get too close. I don't know what they do in Nigeria or Africa, wherever she says she's from. But at the end of the day, over here in America, it's 2022. And I'm pretty sure you've seen the news. And if you're going to be so forward with people and be so upfront and, and do so vocally and then do it in somebody's face, I think now you need to understand some of these black folk over here and black women ain't going to take that shit. Toya, I didn't really, I, I feel like she had that, I, get, I I thought she had that spirit in her, and apparently she does, because at first I kind of thought, you know, she talk all that shit, but she ain't gonna really do nothing, but Toya, look, y'all, she big faced the fuck out of uh, Ardra, and that was one of the most epic moments to me, actually, I think one of the most I can remember physically going at each other on Marriage to Medicine, I guess they say, fuck that. This season took too long being picked up sitting on the shelf after we filmed every motherfucking episode of this season. And it took so long for us to get picked up. We got to add some drama like some of the other housewives and all this other, uh, you know, gaggedy bullshit and get it started and get some views over here from the people so we can get more views. So next time when season 10 come about, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, them bitches done threw some jalapenos up in there. They done spiced it up, y'all. Some Louisiana jalapenos up in there, too. They done got hot Georgia. Yeah. And so y'all gonna wanna watch next season. Y'all about y'all about to boost them ratings up because now y'all wanna y'all wanna find out what the fuck happens in the, in the next episode, right? I know I do. And if you don't, don't come back here because I'm gonna be sitting my ugly ass right here reporting it, telling y'all everything I saw and what I didn't miss, what we, and what I didn't see, what I did miss, basically. But um, yeah, Toya did handle herself pretty well, and then she stepped back and was like, I guess all that wine she drinking, they gonna have her half stepping. She over there mashing them grapes and blending that motherfucking juice up, making them wineries over there, you know, having her cocktails and whatnot, but she ain't drunk enough that when a bitch walk up on her, she ain't scared to put her hand not up in their face, just up in their face, but all the way up in it to send that motherfucker back where it came from. And Audrey, you wrong. Now you got to come in with the scenes, you know, being the girl that got her ass whooped, I think the first girl in history that I remember getting her ass whooped over on, on Marriage and Medicine, you know what I'm saying? And Jackie just sitting there just as poised, looking like grand diva, queen of everything, and not bothered with her legs crossed and just watching all the foolery and fuckery unfold right before her very eyes. Not only that, Jackie also called out. She was like, nah, Heavenly was over there being straight up messy and got all this shit started. Now she over here acting like she don't know what the fuck happened. Um, After all was said and done, y'all seen on the way out the door, Quaz aunt had to be the one to start bucking up, banging on the counters and acting just as ignorant as she was telling everybody else not to fucking do Y'all got them kind of kin folk that, you know, they probably don't really fuck with you on, they kind of on the off and on kind of thing. And then when you really hit it, they all up in your face. Y'all doing all this in this woman's house? This woman work hard. Just kissing ass on the camera. Just kissing ass. Kissing. I'm talking about put enough lipstick on to kiss ass for the next 32 hours. Maybelline style. The kind that don't rub away. You know what I'm saying? Y'all seen the commercials where you can kiss all day long and rub some shit and naked somebody, you know, and the shit don't rub out. She can kiss her ass all day with that bullshit. I mean, come on now, Auntie. Quad and kissed her own ass enough. She had to have had a, a rubber neck to kiss her own ass up on the own platform, up on the stage while she was going down upon the people, telling them how the fuck she felt, in my, you know, when they showed up at the house and how she made this big accomplishment and they pretty much ain't shit, you know, because they had to have a man. Some of them, not all of them, had to have a man to have their accomplishments, but she done had a man, got rid of the man, you know, ran through a couple of other men and dating and fucking some married men. As it comes to Simone, not me, Simone says she fucked the contract that was married. I don't know. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We'll get to that part of the show in a minute. But the bottom line was, back to Quas auntie, sit your ass down somewhere. Because you acting, I mean, I don't know if she had Tourette's or she was catching a seizure or she was catching a holy girls. But at the end of the day, all that jumping them down and bouncing and beating on the counters and shit, Fucking up your curls, your good curls you got done for the holler slave party that Quad finally invited your ass over to just to, to uh, support her storyline to keep her on the show and get her a peach next season. You gonna help her overlay the overslay? 
by acting a damn fool, beating on the counters and yelling at people you don't even fucking know. And you don't know what kind of relationship. Quad welcomed this shit to the house. Quad knew what kind of folks she was dealing with when she invited them to the holler sleigh. She been knowing what kind of ladies these were. And then mixing up certain ones together. The only one we were not sure about was Audra. And Audra came on a little too strong to tell you, which I thought she should have checked about some of the shit she had said about her throughout the season. But the bottom line is, sis, you can't just run up on nobody and think they're not going to do anything about it. Because I can honestly say if I was in Toya's position, it probably would have not been like Simone crazy ass saying to my open all this, this and that. That's a punch. That's a bullshit. A punch when you take like Fred Sample saying take five of them motherfuckers and ball them up to make one and make a mighty punch and slug a bitch to, uh, to knock him on the other side of town. That's a punch. That open hand shit that Toya gave her with the big face. I felt like there was another warning sign saying the next time you come, now you gonna get a punch, bitch. So back up. Can I be mad about that? I'm not. Don't invade my personal space. Say what you want to say. Say what you have to say from that side of the room. With them, the, the ramifications of leaving me, you know, my personal space. And I, I suggest that to all of y'all uh, on, the, on the cast. But at the end of the day, the, the bottom line was time to get some shit started. Um, uh, 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 Heavily been calling the ladies to come to work for a while now. So I guess they decided to show up and they threw Audra on this bitch to show up full time, part time you know, whatever, and do what it takes to make it happen. And I, <laughs> even if that takes being big-faced on camera, because Heavenly already said, if y'all whoop her ass over there on, on, on the set, she ain't never coming back. She don't give a fuck. She ain't made enough money. She said that. So now she's going to go stir up some shit to get another bitch beat up on the camera where they're just not coming in. <laughs> now they, got, they got to face the shame, you know, for the rest of their coming days up on the season. Hmm. And then it got their ass big faced and, and whooped over here on the camera. We saying whoop, but she ain't really, I don't think she ain't mixed on her. But for a quiet as kept, that's a, it ain't no draw. If you had to declare a winner, it was Toya. You know, hey, Toya say, fuck that. I may be up there in age. You may be older or young to be my daughter. But let me just tell you, if you were my daughter and you came at me in that light, bitch, I'd knock your motherfucking bobby pins out your head. Um, what else went on? Um, the gathering at Anita's house was messy as fuck. The gathering with Simone, Contessa, and Quad, uh, that was messy as fuck. It was just to carry out some more bullshit. Um, Anita and the other girls, you know, Audra and Heavenly sat around talking about what happened at Quad's party. Quad was nowhere in the mix. Quad was too busy taking care of Mason and cooking something else and Miss, Mar Miss Mary needed to be eating. They over there celebrating her brother's birthday and shit like that. So she over there slammed up in the kitchen while Miss Mary over there setting up declarations and shit. But we'll get to that second also, uh, that section also in a moment. But to them sectioning off and, you know, declaring war on each other or somewhere in lights, we, what happened between Toya and Audra a couple of days before that at Quad's house, Heavenly, Audra, and I think it was Anila met at Anila's house. And... Like I told y'all, Kawhi said up there, I mean, heaven to say she's not getting her ass up on the camera, but she said Audra up and she even said, well, bitch, you went up there and talked all that shit to, um, to Toya, and then you ran up on her like that. She was like, that was not cool or whatever, but, you know, you got your ass beat, bitch, <laughs> which is pretty much the summing up of it, you know, and heaven is still saying she had nothing to do with it, although she got called out by, I think, Anila or something like that, but bitch, fuck that. You you fell for debate. Anita said she had to back down. She couldn't get her face punched or big face because she got to be before the camera, such as I. You know, we can't fuck up this here. That's fucking up a good thing. We can't fuck up that. And Anita said she had to back down before she got a heel put in her face and also this aim. But Audrey had to buck up on some other bullshit, some old shit they had to settle with the calculator and everything else, but she came back with some other shit, fucking with that woman, and that's what happened. Uh, as for Toya, Contessa, and Simone, they met up at the restaurant. Them grand hoes met up at the restaurant to spend some money. And they, you know, Anita probably ain't had no baby babysitter after she had done fell out with her mama behind them kids again. But the, the other ladies met up at some kind of eatery, some kind of restaurant or whatever, bodega, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Had a little soup, salad, a little wine, and a little, of course, meow mix, bitch. Um, and talked about, again, what happened at Quartz Party. And how it was very uncool for Audra to, to step against her. And, and, and Toya was like, bitch, I feel like you was invading my space. I don't know what the word was Eugene used when he was explaining outside the Cecil. But, you know, shit. 
quiet as kept Simone had, you know, really tried 15 minutes earlier to try to sneak Toya out the back door when the shit was getting started by Heavenly. And somewhere along the way while she was sneaking out the bike, um, Arthur came with the bullshit. So that's why, you know, the shit couldn't just stop there. The train had to keep on rolling. But they were talking about Toya and Toya said, you know, bitch, you invaded my space. You don't do that. I don't play that shit. Bottom line is, I'm, I might be looking old in your eyes, but I can jump like any old new young frog. Try me if you must. I show up when you call me. Cause I didn't come for you, bitch. So don't don't, don't send for me, unless you want what I have to bring. And that's how I feel about it right now. Ain't Toya ain't the best at attitude, and her ways and shit. But Arthur came at that woman sideways, and she got the motherfucking business. She got a she got a ponytail rewrap. Um. And, you know, they were talking about the rumor that had been spread somewhere around the community about Toya and therefore spilling over into Quad, which ain't what nowhere on the fucking scene. She too busy trying to memorialize her brother, you know, for the fifth or sixth, seventh time and, and remember, remember him with some steak taters and some asparagus and shit like that and a few balloon releases with some counters and whatnot and so forth. But they fucked around and dropped a nugget on her and said, well, fuck, she was sleeping with the married contractor. So quiet, maybe there was some truth to what Heavenly had said up on her podcast about you running them through the city, fucking with the married men just because they married. I keep telling y'all that there's some truth to that. I hear motherfuckers around me on a daily basis sit there and say, oh, ain't nothing wrong with fucking with nobody married because at the end of the day, they're not bound to you, they're not stuck to you, and you ain't got to deal with them in the aftermath of anything else and send them back to their husband and wife. You dirty bitch. You dirty bitch. If that's the case, hey, look, get that motherfucker, be on one accord and go about your business. And cut that, cut something loose. Be bold enough to cut something loose. Too many things are running in the ground. Can't work. So with that being said, apparently Quad is running around and she didn't, I don't know if it's one, two, or that's allegedly. Don't call people with no goddamn papers. Allegedly, you know, she was sleeping with married men per, uh, not Contessa, uh, 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 shit, Simone. So, you know, that's another rumor out there in the air. Um, Anila's mom, that little lady's a character, y'all. I keep telling y'all she get on my fucking nerve, but this episode, it was really funny because uh, Anila finally went at her with both bears and was telling her basically in so many words, she ready for her to pack up her high heels, her wig, and, pocket, and her keys and shit and get the fuck up out of Dodge and get up out of her house because she's not doing what she thought she would be doing like Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, what's the lady's name was? Miss Gomez. She ain't doing all that shit with Mama said, I ain't getting paid for that bitch. She put that robe over her head and got that broom and got to sleep. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Ma'am. You want me to clean? I clean for you. All the different shit. I'm doing that, Mom. That, I mean, honestly, she said she was going to hit with your kids. She didn't say she was going to be your fucking housekeeper. So I agree with her on that point. Clean your own fucking house. If you're rich enough to go over there and put $500,000 worth of furniture up in that house, so you say, Anila, Look, be grand enough to take your ass over there and find you somebody to come around there and clean that house up and find you a maid to come clean that bitch. Your mama get the kids off the school, put in a bed and all the other shit and let somebody else clean up the mess. Pay somebody else for that shit. That woman still want to live her golden years. She said, I'll look after them, but I'm not about to clean up after them. That's all it seems like she's saying now. But as far as washing them hands, listen, mama, wash them motherfucking fingers. Listen, because y'all be eating stuff with your hands, sticking meat and goat meat and all this old stuff. Fried braised billy goat and all this old stuff, knox tails and all that shit with your fingers and whatnot. That's what I assume they be eating because the hands look so sticky and the stuff they put on the plate. It's I don't know. It's just a lot going on for me. But all that to be said, wash your hands. Everybody wash your goddamn hands. Yes. Um. But yeah, I think that's pretty much what she was trying to tell her. Like basically, I would watch your children. I would bathe them, put them to bed. I'd be grandma. But as far as all that should have been your housekeeper, bitch, you better teach your kids and clean about that itself or hire you a fucking maid or better yet, hire you a nanny because I'm sick of you and your kids. I'm ready to go back to uh, Zimbabwe or Himbangdu or wherever the fuck she came from. It's what mama telling her. <clears throat> um, Contessa seemed to be doing a little too fucking much. Contessa, you're doing a lot. You done made too many hints that you're trying to get your body together just in case or if you wasn't married. In this particular episode, she goes to back to her 20 years ago when she didn't have kids, uh, was married, when she walked the runway and all this other shit. You know, at the end of the day, since you got something to fall back on, you have a loving family, according to you. You know, you got some shit going on with Scott, but y'all got to either bring it to the forefront or, or figure that shit out in the backgrounds. 
because either we want to know about it or we don't want to hear about it. It's just like that. But she just keeps seeing too many innuendos out here to my some how if she wasn't married, how she'll fuck this man or take him down. He kind of her type. But I'm saying, well, goddamn, I guess you bumped yourself down and took a settlement because you got Scott. Now, Scott ain't no great grant looker, but he all right. His body is all right, but he wasn't built like them old guys over at that gym. And she was over there salivating. I thought I had to come over there to Atlanta and get her a custom-made beer to put around her mammy fucking neck while she going through this, uh, you know, this trying time, getting her body back in, in shape for this competition. There she go. And to me, like I said, I always, she looks pretty good, always have, even where she's at right now. But you saying too much, Contessa. What the fuck you telling us but not telling us? If I was married, or I mean, if I wasn't married and all that, you you talking too much. You about to fuck some shit up. What you need to do is close your mouth when you're fucking around and be like Toya, because trust you me, Toya's going to have to face the day. She said, up there and keep calling uh, uh, Eugene's dick little. She's going to have to face that shit, because I know one of y'all going to be shady enough, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be heavenly. It's going to be the one to bring it up for ammunition when Toya getting her motherfucking face about something. I bet you. I guarantee you. I put my neck as my grandma say on the getting team. I guarantee it's going to be heavenly that uses it against her first. And I kept saying it was Toya because I was looking at the hairstyle. But then look at the same swoop down. That's Simone crazy ass. Toya over here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, shut your mouth. You shut your goddamn mouth, Contessa. Unless you're ready to tell her what the full goddamn story is, keep it closed. Um, I don't understand. Getting down to what I was talking about over here at Quad's Mansion, um, the Queendom. I'm trying to find out now. I didn't really completely understand the pretenses as to which why Mason was living with Quad. Now, I do recall seasons or uh, episodes, yeah, seasons back where, where uh, Mason was a baby and the brother and the baby mama stayed there for a period of time and it was getting to be out of hand and too much and all this different shit. But I never knew what happened to the mom. I didn't know if she had got strung out on dope, if she was broke, if she was homeless, what the fuck was going on. I don't understand other than, like I said before, why Quad is keeping this child other than to have a storyline and moving Miss Mary up in here to keep this peach. Because the mama looks more than motherfucking capable to take care of the child unless she didn't have some kind of nervous breakdown, which apparently can't be true because at the end of the day, when they are doing a release ceremony for Quad's brother in the backyard after eating dinner and having a little discussion and conversation, which I still, Quad, that's very disrespectful for you to refer to uh, what she had to have, the longest motherfucking speech even then trying to send up a prayer. God. Damn, I know sometimes Quad probably try to send God messages in prayer, and he probably, him and probably take his phone off the hook. Because she'd be so fucking long-winded. She'd probably go down there and see if she can be a bishop or an evangelist or something. Because she's long-winded as fuck. But anyway, getting back to the situation at hand. Um, unless the mama had some kind of nervous breakdown, which she didn't because she clearly has other children you know, that she was speaking about when she sent her prayer with the hot balloon that was fucking damn near about to catch her on fire. It took so long to send the bitches off into the air. But, like I said, I don't understand why Quad has Mason and is keeping him other than, because it could be financially, if that's the case, he's still your nephew, whether he lives with you or lives with his mother. Is it because it helps you get a better, better tax break? Is that the reason why mama has enough, uh, baby mama has enough kids to declare on her taxes to still get enough like 10000 or something like that back to still buy nice coats and shit like that and a couple of good bags and weaves and stuff like that and still live good. I don't know. Just thinking. Because other than that, the storyline and a good tax break, I don't see why the fuck are... Uh, and, and yeah, I share with that raised in Lil' Mason. Lil' Mason should be at home with his mother, but I don't know how often he's at Quad's house or whatever. But maybe they just want to spend time with him because he reminds them of her brother uh, and, and Miss Mary's son. But... Somebody hit me with that. Drop down in the comments and tell me what y'all think or what the fuck y'all might know about the situation. Jackie, Dr. Jackie seems to be pulling back from the show, y'all. I told y'all before, Audrey and Dr. Martin is being introduced to the show for a reason. This typically tells me that somebody else is about to be added to the cast while someone else is either choosing to walk away or being asked to walk away. And I doubt very seriously Dr. Jackie is being asked to walk away. I think she's choosing to probably step away. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know if y'all think it's going to be Dr. Jackie that's moving away from her practice and moving away, not, well, not just her practice, but away from marriage to medicine, um, period, or as far as the seasons and um, the show goes. And I say that because if you look at it, she's actually interviewing doctors. She has the most successful practice of anybody else on the motherfucking show. And her and Dr. Damon are running neck and neck, basically, right? Um, 
and she's doing so well with her uh, skincare line and she's such a great doctor. She's a doctor to the stars. She has been for years. Her practice has grown to the point to where she just now, she's saying she wants to step away and not see patients as much and she wants to make sure that her patients are in capable and willing hands um, and it's, they're going to care as much about her patients as she did and give them the care that she would in her absence. And she kept repeating how she wants to spend more time with her husband and step away from the nine to five. So honestly, y'all, that gives me the clue that Dr. Jack is about to take a, a back seat to this thing and say she didn't took her last ride. She didn't got picked up. She's not about to be on pins again. Because I'm telling y'all, I'm sure Dr. Jackie makes way more in the backgrounds or the full grounds that she's doing on singing uh, on the front seat of American Medicine. She probably about to go somewhere and be a friend of the show. You know, appear every now and again to keep some checks rolling for some pocket change, just for dropping the bucket to keep some extra money coming in. Which, why not? You know, yeah, I got millions, but why not strive for billions? Hey, and so I think I think she's going to actually leave the show and um, come back as a friend to the show and kind of you know make appearances and shit like that. I, I thought it was gonna probably be Simone also, but I think Simone and Cecil trying to. Run on and see what the end's going to bring with this goddamn book. So we're going to see how that's going to turn out. Um, We already talked about Anita planning to give her mama the boot, but she planned on giving her mama the boot, but went down there saying how stressed she is down in the Kieran's office to get her some more free Botox from her husband and shit like that. So she going down and get her, her, her crow's feet <clears throat> done before it even starts is what her plan is, right? If y'all paid attention to the episode, even watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and believe me, Kieran was all for it. He like, shit, let's go home tonight and deliver the news. I paid for the flight tickets to send their ass back to Hushi Tushu or wherever the fuck it was they came from and get rid of their motherfucking ass because your mom getting on my nerve and your dad is in trail. He ain't too far behind. And y'all still talking about looking for Miss Gomez. Miss Gomez told y'all, fuck off, piss off, leave me the fuck alone. I got some shit of my own to take care of my family. Oh, we ought to go and offer to buy her a car. Oh, we ought to give her her own room. What the fuck you mean give her her own room? You mean to tell me Miss Gomez didn't have a, her own fucking room living up in y'all mansion, dealing with them goddamn kids all motherfucking day long? And y'all had her, I told y'all had her driving off in that old ass suburban. That woman should have had just as nice. When you have nannies like that that, that are dedicated to you, bitch, if you on driver bins, make sure your nanny got a bins. Although it may be not brand new as yours, maybe used. And with a warranty on that bitch, make sure your nanny is tight and set. That may, that may compel them to have some loyalty to your ass. Stop, stop mistreating your fucking employees. Shit. People get tired of that shit. I'm going to put a whole video out about that motherfucking shit next. Because let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And y'all going to roll with me on that shit. Trust me. But yeah. Kieran is all about getting rid of their ass. And sending their ass back where the fuck they come from. And I'm here for it as well. Now, let's get down to the, to the grits and gravy. Anita's house being broken into. What the fuck? I don't understand. One, like I said, the real housewives of Atlanta, half of them had violations on their property or inside their fucking house. Um, them over here, all these stars and celebrities, their houses getting broken in. Y'all know y'all have valuable shit. Where in the fuck is y'all daily watch security and y'all motherfucking alarm system where you can check in on that motherfucker and it dings off on your phone to say, hello, somebody's at your door. Hello, somebody done kicked your door the fuck in. Hello, somebody is in the gate near your property that you did not, that you didn't let in, right? Search lights and everything like the goddamn penitentiary ought to go off in your fucking yard when the motherfucker come. Haven't y'all seen the commercial? Who is it, ADT? One of them. Where the man is sitting out in the fucking yard, or uh, 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 is it progressive? Where they sitting out in the yard all night long? Get y'all some good motherfucking security. Where y'all shit got some watch lights and all. And then y'all have this. Well, she had her. Um, uh, let me just say this. Everybody was saying, "Oh, I feel sorry for her. Oh, I feel sorry for her. Oh my god." Okay, let me just say this. Part of me said I feel sorry because the part of me that that felt sorry was they could have possibly been in this house. When somebody came in, you know, like Quad said, causing uh, 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 Kieran to have to struggle for his family's life and getting himself hurt or losing his life in the midst of them being kidnapped, abducted, or even hurt, killed, or whatever. So that part of me I feel bad for and I, I sympathize with them because 
that could have possibly happened. That was a real thing. Second, other part of me says, fuck that shit. What the fuck are y'all thinking? Where's your security? And what in the fuck is your wedding ring, your jewels, your family heirloom sitting at home just in a goddamn drawer accessible to anybody that chooses to come through and wander through your house and steal your shit? Bitch, you ain't never heard of a safe. Get you a motherfucking good old safe, put up in that house, and I would have that bitch bolted in the floor like they had them ATM machines. Listen, you gonna drag this bitch up out. By the time you get this motherfucker up out of this house, I'll be gonna come home and shot you up in your ass buns and laid you the rest right there by that motherfucking armor safe. And been call the law to come on over and scoop you up and, and get rid of you. And take your and get, call the meat wagon and come scoop them up. And I don't believe in killing nobody. By all means, I don't. I don't even like guns, but the bottom line is, at the end of the day, if you felt that bold to get your ass through a gated community with all these mansions in here and find your way in the house, and just, they probably ate a sandwich. They probably been up into your refrigerator. They probably been fucking around. With, now you can't even blame your mama behind that. Where was your mama at? Well, she was at the point. Well, no, where was your mama at? Did y'all get rid of them already when y'all had to talk? Because it was two days later, according to the blogs and all this other shit. And according to Quad, you know, where were your parents? If they were gone, you know, the bottom line is, she ain't got to go about cleaning up a goddamn thing, you know, because the folk that come ram shack the kitchen, ate the good cheese, drank the good wine, ate the good salami you went down there and bought the good turkey you went bought for you and your family, and went all up through your jewelry box and probably laid up in your bed and watched your cable television. I'd be ready to sell that motherfucker tomorrow, but the bottom line is, yet listen, I would have better security around my shit as soon as possible. Now look, everybody, and I'm about to wrap it up, everybody was insinuating that it was Toya that caused this robbery. And he said it was Toya, insinuating it was Toya because Toya and Anila were the most ones that was most recent at, at odds with beef, big, heavy beef, you know what I'm saying? Um, most recent. But what, what, I, what I kept saying, no, I don't think it would, it would be taken that far. You know, I didn't know they still lived in the same neighborhood since they sold a house right down the street from them. So I didn't know she lives, Toya and Eugene still stayed in the same neighborhood and could give access to anybody visiting um, to the compound, whatever you want to call it, to the, to the you know, gated community. So I was having a hard time believing that Toya did this shit. But Toya just kept on talking about, well, who would do this to her? Other than somebody that she just keeps telling lies about and telling lies on. I was like, whoo, I had to clutch my pearls. I was like, bitch, you are, you are putting too many clues out there that you either done this or you pissed off about it enough to say that's good for her and you really don't have no remorse for her and what she had going on and what happened to her. I don't know. I don't know. I hope for Pete's sake she had nothing to do with it. Um, I hope Anita and them beef up they got it. Matter of fact, all y'all, because at the end of the day, Cecil and all them, Cecil and Dr. Jackie and them and him, they ain't had nobody breaking their shit, so I don't know. You got, you got just the facts, ma'am. Nothing but the facts. You got to look at the facts. And if the facts say the arrows pointing at Toya at this present moment, I guess we, Toya's the only suspect on the line right now. So I'm, I guess we got to do some, some, some questioning and see what the fuck's going on. But that's all I'm going to even go into on this episode. We're going to see what the next one's going to bring. I got to get out of here so I can go do this Bobby Lights and get up on some other videos. I got to cover for y'all. And, and post this thing. Um, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. New viewers, new viewers, please go ahead and now hit the notification bell so that you can get the notification when I upload these videos. Also, before this video ends, hit the thumbs up button, the like button. Also, for all subscribers, share these damn videos and make sure to go and hit them thumbs up. Y'all been lacking and slacking on these comments and these thumbs up. What's going on? I know what it is. And, and it's coming again. Y'all are so messy. Y'all are so messy. We just <laughs> y'all so messy. I know what y'all looking for. I'll be back with it. I got you. But anyway, share with somebody you know. Share with somebody you don't know. Share with somebody you like. Please share with somebody you can't stand. Hallelujah. Yes, because if you don't like theirs and they don't like your ass, you know I'm guaranteed to be the one in the middle. Money in the middle, right? They gonna love me. Um, if I go love yourselves real good, always, and love those in return who are willing to love you in the same way uh, back or in return. It's full circle. Don't be taking no shorts. All right. To the next video, I holler. See y'all around. Take care.